Giving boys a pocket knife can be a big deal, especially when they come from a father or grandfather. For one St. Mary's boy, it gave his life purpose years ago. Now fast forward a few decades and John Zelt has carved more wild animals and built more furniture than you can count. They're on display anywhere from around the world now, back to Elk County, to as close as his own home. So we went to check out his amazing work. I've been carving for about 68 years now. My parents gave me a pocket knife when I was seven years old. That started me into the carving process. When I was younger, we didn't have television, so we had to find something to do. So wood carving just seemed to fill in any free time I had. And the more I did, the more I liked it. And the more I did, the better I got at it. And when I first started, I made a lot of wooden toys uh, for myself. So we got the fish a lot and got involved with the wildlife a lot so that made me want to bring more into my life and I couldn't get out in the woods. I got sick for one time and I couldn't work and I was sitting in a chair going crazy so my uh, wood carving I could do sitting down so that took care of a lot of boring hours sitting around doing nothing. I'm self-taught there was no one that I knew of in my neighborhood or anyone that I met that was interested in carving. We had a local boys club and they did woodworking projects there but not carving. I did go down there and I used to make cabinets and shelves and model airplanes and did things like that at the boys club. As I got older and I got better at wood carving, I volunteered my services at the boys club and I did start a wood carving class at the boys club. When I teach, I also learn myself since I am self-taught and I'm always picking up things. Hey, that worked nice for me. Just by accident discovered things through the years. Now I have carved over more than 5,000 carvings in my lifetime. And I have presently about 600 wood carvings here at my house. I have my own gallery and cabinets that I have all my pieces that I made for display that I share with people. I have had displays in stores here in town. One day in the, in the store, a lady walked in and she said, who was shooting all the owls? I want to report them to the game commission. And I said, well, thank you for the compliment. So uh, she wanted to have me fine and put in jail for shooting owls. And here they were all made out of wood. So that made me feel good. When I first started carving birds, I didn't know how to make bird feet. So as time went by, I became a machinist. I worked the machine shop, so I learned how to work with metal tools. And then I learned how to make molds to cast up my lead feet for my birds. So I make, made molds for a lot of different kind of uh, birds and animals. For the legs, I used wire, which I put epoxy putty on them. That had a lot of realism to my carvings. So I, I strive for realism. The first two years that I carved, I strived for quantity. I couldn't wait to get one done and do another. So as two years went by, I just filled up my shelves with carvings. And then I started to learn to go for quality. And when I started learning how to put extra detail in, I wasn't happy with the first works that I did. So. I gave everything away and I started over. It was worth to me uh, to start over and slow down and go for quality. The process of learning was I did a lot of reading and also through the years I came across a couple CDs that professional carvers had a demonstration on how to carve a duck or how to carve an animal. And then I subscribed to uh, Wildlife Wood Carving Magazine and several other magazines. So they would have projects in there and patterns. Now I learned to use their patterns, but then as time went by, they did things that I wasn't happy with. Like I want to take and turn a head or position a bird in a different pose. So I learned to draw and make my own patterns. And when I started doing that, then my volume of carving could be any kind of bird that I wanted to make. It wouldn't just have to be what I found in a magazine. Having research material, I use anything that works. Uh, pictures. I go on YouTube and watch animals. I go out in the woods and watch. 
I have a friend that lives across the street from me as a wildlife photographer and he became a good friend of mine so he lets me borrow any pictures that he has taken of wildlife. I can cut out with scissors the shape of a leaf and then paint it and solder it to a metal limb or metal branch and then maybe put putty on the metal to make it look like bark. So it involves a lot of different aspects to the art besides just wood carving. The, uh, you, know, you become a jack of all trades more or less. Besides wood carving, I've built 34 violins and I built a marimba. I do play the violin. My violins are in nine different states across America right now. And some of them have toured across the world. And my carvings are also spread across the world. I have carvings in China and Australia, all across Europe. When my dad was up in years, he lived to be 98 years old. And he was in a nursing home towards the end. And my dad went blind. So I, when I finished the carving, I used to take it in to him and let him see it. And he'd take his hand and feel all over it and feel the shapes and that. And he used to say, oh, Johnny, that's really nice. Well, my dad loved my work. Of course, he, he loved the outdoors and he liked the putter too with making things. And I hope everyone enjoys it as much as I do.